Today I am going to explain how to determine the spring constant of a given helical spring. To determine the spring constant, we need a uh, spring, the constant rigid support and uh, a scale and I need a weights with a hanger. So first I am going to explain the theory part. So we have a spring with this needle. So here we have a spring with this needle here. When there is no mass connected to the spring, this is my initial position of the spring. It said to be x1. If I connect this hanger here with the mass m, if I apply, if I place this mass here, we are getting the extension from here to here. Now the spring is expands, this is pulled by the mass m. So if I add this mass m here, the position of this needle is moves from this point to this point. It should be x2. So the distance between these two points is said to be L. It's called your extension or the length produced by the mass m. So this length actually does my force is directly proportional to my length. So this is nothing but my the force acting on the spring which is directly proportional to the, the extension or the length between x1 and x2. So this is called your Hooke's law. Sir, so what is this force? This is the force acting on the spring. Actually, which is equivalent to the spring force or the, the restoring force. So, one force acting downwards, some force from the spring is acting upward direction. So, the force acting on the spring that is equal to the, the spring force. So, this is the force uh, acting on the spring. So, I just want to replace this proportionality symbol by a constant F which is equal to some K times L. Sir, so what is this K? This is K is called your spring constant. Spring constant. Say, so, okay. So, if I write this is spring constant. What is mean by spring constant? See, if I have a, a copper spring, if I place mass is said to be some 50 grams, I am getting my extension of some 5 centimeters. In the next case, I am going to place an aluminum spring with the same dimension. I am going to place the same mass of 50 grams. My length now it is different from your previous case. So, which means I am giving the same force, but my length is not equal. So, for a different material, we have a different extension for the same applied force. Which means, my K, it tells about the nature of the material. What is that nature? So, the nature of the material means, this K which is tells about the elasticity of the material. So, my K value is a constant for a particular material. If I take aluminum, we have a different K. We have a copper, we have a different K. We have an iron spring, we have a different K value. So, now I can simply write my k is equals to f by l. My k is equals to f by l. So, the SN rate of k is Newton per meter. So, this is my SN rate of the spring constant. So, now in this experiment, I am going to explain how to find the spring constant k using a graph method. So, I am going to plot a graph between the force, the applied force versus your extension. So, in this case, we need a plot, this is my force, this is my extension. If my force gets increases, what is happening? The length also gets increases. If my length gets increases with respect to my force, I am getting a, a straight line, which is between, which is going to be directly proportional to this. If my length gets increases, my force also gets increases. It's going to be a direct proportional. If I take a slope of this curve, I'm getting F by L. If I take the slope, I'm getting F by L. If I find the slope of the given graph, I'm able to find the spring constant. So now I'm going to explain how to determine the spring constant of a given helical spring. So now we have an observation table. This first column tells about the loading on a hanger W that is equal to applied force F gram weight. Then 
this is reading on the pointer when it is loading the mass and then this column is also about the when the unloading the mass and then we have a third column which is tells about the the average of these two reading x plus y by 2 so the average of while loading and unloading we are getting the mean value this is nothing but my extension when you are increasing this mass here when you are placing this mass here that is the extension in the spring so this is l this is in the centimeter so now we are going to plot a graph between this applied force versus this length and we take a slope of the curve we are able to find the spring constant using your Hooke's law. So when there is no load the spring shows the reading of 7 centimeter from the top from this is start from 0 this is my reference point so this is approximately 7.1 so when there is no load when this is zero applied force when there is no hanger is connected the x centimeter should be 7.1 centimeter so 7.1 centimeter it shows and then now i'm going to connect the hanger So we have a hanger, this is 50 grams, we have a hanger, okay, this is 50 grams. So once I connect this 50 grams here, we have an extension. So first, for 50 grams of hanger, we have an extension, extension value. approximately 7.9 so we are noted on the reading in the x 7.9 then now i'm going to add the another 50 gram mass here so once i add this 50 grams mass your weight gets increases your downward force gets increases so now We have an extension, the reading is said to be approximately 10.2 for 100 grams is going to be 10.2. So now again I am going to add another 50 grams. If I add another 50 grams, that is extension. So, this is approximately the value here 13.2 for 150 grams. This is 13.2 centimeter extension from the top. And then, if I add another 50 grams here, and we are going to note in the reading. Sixteen point four approximately. So for two hundred grams of weight, sixteen point four. Next, uh, again, I'm going to add a uh, another fifty grams. So adding this another fifty grams, we have a uh, extension nineteen point five for two fifty grams total two fifty grams nineteen point five. So so using this observation if your mass gets increases here this also gets increases your extension also gets increases so for two when unloading for 250 grams we are getting the same result here 19.5 so now i am going to remove mass one by one so we are going to observe the reading so now i am going to remove this first mass Now we have a value the same 16.4. So while while loading we will get the same result while unloading I am getting the same result it is going to be 
4. This is my observation. And then when I removing the next mass this is called unloading. It's approximately 13.1. So in while loading is it was 13.2. Now it's going to be 13.1 centimeter. Okay. So now I'm going to remove the another mass. If I remove the another mass, I want the value of 10. Approximately 10.1. So I'm getting a value of 10.1. And then I'm going to remove the another mass. Now we have a reading of 7.8. 7.8. And then if I remove this hanger, now we have a empty. Without load, we have a reading. Again, it's coming to the 7.1. So, while loading, we have this reading, while unloading, we have this reading. Now, I am going to take the average between these two and then we are able to find the extension. Then, we are going to plot a graph between this four applied <coughs> force versus the extension to find my spring constant. So, now we have a plot between extension versus the applied force. So, I am taking my extension length in centimeter along my x axis and my applied force along my y axis this is gram weight. So, first we are going to choose the scale. So, along my x axis 1 unit equals to 1 centimeter along the y axis my 2 unit equals to 50 gram weight. So, you can choose your scale according to your reading. So, now we have plot a graph between L and your applied force. We are getting the a straight line since my force is directly proportional to the length. If my force is directly proportional to the length, this is going to be a, a straight line. So, if I take a slope of the curve, the, if I take the slope of this curve, I am getting this value here. This is approximately 175.5 and this is if I take this length, this length is going to be 7.3. So, if I substitute this here, my k equals to the spring constant k is equals to f by l. So, if I substitute this value here 175.5 divided by 7.3, this is equals to 24.04. The numerator we have a gram weight. So, gram weight, the denominator we have a centimeter, so it will be per centimeter. So, if I plot a graph between my force versus extension, if I take the slope of the curve, I am able to find the spring constant of a given helical spring. So, thanks for watching. If you are like this video, share with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get the regular updates. Thanks for watching.